and Dr. Drew. Loveline, coast to coast. Hey, everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. How did Good Morning America go? Good. That was good. Yeah, not great. No, it's all right. I mean, it's, it's always, uh, you know, super pressed for time, trying to combine a million stories into one, you know, three minute segment. Yeah. It's all right. Yeah, they go a little, they go a little nutty sometimes. I mean, I mean, that's what uh, TV does. To me, you know what it is? It's that same thing that segment producers do in t- talk shows. <clears throat> what are you going to talk about? What are you going to talk about? And then we're going to pack 40 things in yeah. and get to one of them. Yeah, don't give stuff a chance to breathe a little. That's it's right. it's what makes a smoothie bad. Yeah. You know what a good smoothie is? You pick out two fruits or one yeah. fruit you like and tell them to uh, dump some frozen yogurt in there and some that's honey, it. and you're good. Mm. But the, you know where they go like... We take walnuts and wheatgrass, and we take a banana, and we take strawberries, and then we take blueberries, mm-hmm. and we take golden raisins, and eventually it just tastes like soupy ass. Yes, yeah. Which was my uh, my dad's name when he used to work the cat skills. Soupy ass. Soupy ass. <laughs> no, it it starts tasting like <clears throat> you don't know what it tastes like. Yeah, yeah. This if you take a smoothie and you put too many fruits in it, you don't know what it tastes like. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It yeah. Just it just it tastes sweet. Yeah. But you don't know what it is. Right. And this is what they do on all these shows. They try to cram too much in, and and then you don't even know what the topic was. And it's always because they're scared. It's like the guy who's manning the blender is saying, well, just dump more crap in there. It's got to be better. Make a tweeter. Make we'll a make tweeter. the world's greatest make smoothie. It, we'll just keep dumping we'll stuff it, in. Then we'll call it the Shazam <laughs> Razzmatazz as opposed to a hey, good smoothie. Right. <laughs> Right, but and, you're not just talking about news. You're talking about talk and, and a lot of television. M- most television, most yeah. TV tries to ram too yeah. much stuff up the took eye yeah. in too short a period of time. And and getting back to my uh, wonderful smoothie analogy, it's their thing is is hey, blueberries are great, right? Yeah. yeah, and bananas are great, right? Yeah, and strawberries are good. Let's just peaches, great nectarines, everything's great. Let's just keep forcing them in as fast as we can go, yeah. but. They're not great when they all get mashed together. You want to be able to get the flavor of one fruit. And they, I hate when they do and that. And I think network is more guilty than cable. What are you going to talk about? What cable is much, about? much lo- looser. I'll tell you, one, one of the best times I ever had on a, a talk show was Dennis Miller. Mm. Barely talked to the, to the uh, segment, segment producer. producer. Yeah. Barely. Mm. You're just going to go out there and hang out for 10 minutes and talk about whatever you talk about. And people are going to call up. And Dennis Miller's funny enough to roll with whatever you want to roll with, and who knows what he's going to ask you. And it was great. That's a talk show. Right. Yeah. The other stuff is trying to process too much. Yeah. So the, for those of you who don't know, you do these talk shows. They they try to rehearse you, and then it comes... I guess it's good if you're an actor who doesn't have a whole lot to say, but if you're used to talking, I mean, think rehearsing how, yeah. feels weird. Think how many times we said, hey, we talk for a living. So we do. Right. Do you rehearse it? We're gonna, we're not gonna. Whatever you, this is the way it goes. Whatever we talk about, we're not gonna talk about when we get out there anyway. So just don't waste your time. Yeah. Okay. So where were you born? And what? And there we go. And on and on and on. Yeah. They, they will not let go. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right. So, so here we uh, go. Enough, enough. I'm sure it was one. So you learned some plastic surgery tips last night. Yes. Did you decide to get with some liposuction or gonna get a li- implants? Little lipo? Are you implants? Gonna gonna what? get that clef I've always been looking for yeah. in my chin, and. uh and uh, yeah, a little lipo on the love love handle. Let's Dr. go, in. Marcel. You and I'll go together and do it all up. He wants to get me back to do some. Uh, wants to do that laser so my uh, ingrown ha- neck hairs won't come back in. But uh, last time I was in there, he charged me full price, and I all all I got is some uh, Romanian bitch. She, it was just like <laughs> one of James Bond's uh, henchmen just firing this laser, my Adam's apple for an hour, cost a hundred bucks, and all the hair grew back. Right. Did you give him appropriate S for that? Yes. Yeah, okay. and, and, you know, and, he, and Marcel's thing was like, oh, yeah, yeah, that was with the old laser that didn't work. Oh. It's like, hey, how about my money back then? Yeah. We're going to my money back. What about some gas money? Hauling my ass Still all the way beach. out to the South Bay for two hours. And then, you know, when my uh, neck hairs did grow back, they all got ingrown because they, like, fell out. And then when they came back, they were sub subdermal, nice. as uh, we say in the medical profession. Yeah, Drew. Julia? Yes, oh, yeah, that was pretty. Me lancing big <laughs> ingrown hairs in my neck. Oh. Go ahead, Julian. As you know, you know I'm on the camera making my living with this <laughs> the cash register. You see the cash register here, Drew? That's I, what I make my living I, off I, of. I, I sit in, in awe of it every night. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. 
Uh, go ahead, Julie. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, I just had a question. First of all, I want to tell you guys I love you guys. You're awesome. You're the best. Um, Thank you. And, uh, okay, for I've been with my boyfriend over a year now. Mm-hmm. And uh, for the first six months, our sex life was great. We had sex all the time. Um, and then uh, about last June, I guess, um, it started becoming really painful after I have sex. And uh, I can en- I, I still enjoy sex, and while we're having sex, it's great. But then, it, like, immediately afterwards, um, it swells up and it gets really painful. Are you using and- condoms? No. Are you? How come? What are you using for birth control? I, I'm on birth control. And all right. And is, is, is anything changing in what you guys are doing? Are you going to do it longer or differently? Or no, no. It's. I mean, it's exactly the same. And do you still and, lubricate and, normally? Well, we didn't. I didn't even used to have to. And then um, after this started happening, I, I had gone into the doctor, and I was telling him. Um, you know, I said, "Oh, it's really painful after I have sex," and and my doctor was like, "Oh, well, sex is rough. It's." You know, normal. And I was Bend like, over. Okay. Oh, my God. Yeah, and so she's like, oh, you just need to use lubrication. Cool. No, wait, hold on a second. True. Wait, no, let's I, hear that, bur- that regurgitation again. Well, that was a nice sound effect. When you say to women on this show, do you lubricate normally, th- they think you're talking about lubricant. L- and, using lubricants. Well, yes, she's, because your body doesn't really produce. It, it doesn't produce lubricant, yeah. but it lubricates. Are you nor- we say normally wet? Yeah, I, I, th- I think you're going to have to downgrade <laughs> to that. I, I do. You juicy, baby? You <laughs> normally juicy? I used to be. <laughs> All right, so that that's that's the problem, right? Yeah, that's the change. Okay. And I, and like before, we used. To Are be- you on? Did did you start the birth control pill? Well, around the, yeah, I um. Around the time of the change. Uh, like a, a month or two before. There you go. That's what did it. Okay, but I've used, I mean, I've, I've been off and on this, this I'm on orthotrophacline, yeah. and I've been off and on it since yep. high school, Right. but I've never had the problem before. Have you had a, you, but you've not been with this guy before, and maybe that's just the nature of your guy's sexual relationship is sort of triggering this. Hmm. You see what I'm saying? It's, you haven't been with the same guy, and so it's a different intensity and duration, that kind of thing, and it's just changed your lubrication a little bit and enough to give you some symptoms. So you, just, yeah, she's right. You just got to use lubricants. But I've been doing it. It's not. Oh, it's not working. No, Ooh. and and so I mean, it's. I mean, I still, I, I obviously still want to have sex with him, but I mean, it afterward, it's it's sore and it's painful, and like just last weekend, um, we tried to go a second time, but I can't. Like, how long? How long are you going for it for? I mean, this is even if we if we we went for fifteen twenty minutes. That's mm-hmm. still a long time. No. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Seems like no, I mean, a lifetime, that's, yeah. I, I, that's a, I can't really, I, I mean... It, that, it, well, Julia, hold on, that, hold that, on that. a second. But, but listen, 15 to 20 minutes, she's counting as a short period of time because she means... Three and a half s- minutes. No, she means seven to ten minutes. <laughs> okay. you, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. She doesn't mean 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. 20 minutes of, of humping is... It's uh, a long time. I'll tell you, go uh, do push-ups for one minute. See how you feel. Right. Uh, at about the 45, 50 second mark. Yeah. I mean, uh, not, not that you can't hump any longer than a minute, but what I mean is to sort of assume the position and uh, start the movement and and see how long, t- what see what 20 minutes feels like. That is a long time to be, do any physical activity. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, you know, if you're taking the breaks and, you you know, you're doing my, th- you know, I do the thing where I take the beer and I take a swig and I go, cha. And then I slide the cold beer bottle across my uh, forehead. You know that move? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen you do it. I mean... <laughs> they don't do that move enough anymore, do they? No. Swig off the beer bottle and then drag it across the forehead. <sighs> Julie, we don't have... to be a move, I, I, I guys really would still do. Believe, Not anymore. I, know. I still I, believe I, it's probably the strong progesterone in the pill. I really do. Okay, so so would that be something I just need to... To change to a yeah, you got to talk to doctor about some alternatives, and you may have to change a couple times before you find the one that works. I'm going to bring back that uh, <laughs> with the beer bottle across the forehead movement. You no, know, the hot day Gatorade sort of taking that over. <laughs> I know, yeah, but it's, it's not. Now. They don't slide that plastic bottle. You know, it's it's bright purple. Let me say this. Uh-oh. I saw some guy chugging on one of those uh, Mountain Dew Reds the other day, and uh, Pepsi's coming out with the blue. 
And uh, this seems to be uh, nectar of the tar <laughs> times two. I, I don't know what the F is going on with this society that we're drinking this day glow crap that's got to, I don't, I don't even, what, I, I'd be scared for, for any of that stuff to touch my, my body. They like mm. I, I wouldn't want to touch an article of my clothing. What's going on? No, it's like it's like drinking otter pops. <clears throat> I like we're, right? I'm seeing. I I've not tasted any of this stuff. I I could only imagine what this tastes like. And and I, we've had trouble with sponsors in the past. And I've got yelled at for calling. Uh, what I call? Uh, oh Mountain yeah, Dew. Mountain Dew nectar of the tards. So I, I like to take. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to pick on them specifically. But all these companies. Everyone is getting into the act with some sort of crazy day glow red or yeah. blue drink. It's yeah. not really a soda, and I'm not so sure how carbonated it is. But I just see these commercials where uh, guys are chugging this stuff, and I think, uh, what happened? Where'd we, where'd we go wrong? Yeah, where'd we go wrong? When, yeah. Listen, when I was when I was nine, I knew Gatorade tasted like ass. And and when I, by the time I was twelve, it was like, look, give me some water, give me some orange juice, or give me a coke, you know. But I'm not drinking any of this uh, newfangled novelty crap you're trying to pass off. What is it with twenty two year old guys chugging this stuff down in these commercials? Are, are they? They must have a form of. Is this? This is for retarded people. It's for uh, the twenty two year old autistic. Autistic. Yeah. Autistic. Yeah. I, I just I can't imagine the people that are buying this stuff. I, I drink Gatorade. Yeah, you you're a, you're an electrolyte man. Yeah, and actually, I've uh, the taste has grown on me. It still tastes like crap, but it's got, it's got some little electrolyte. They have, thing I in finally it. found they have this frost variety. These these different frost ones that yeah. actually finally taste. But look, I, I, you really need to suck up basically uh, antifreeze. Mm. I mean, it's just a bunch of chemicals and compounds and a bunch of corn sweetener and Wa stuff. Water's but, fine. Yeah, water's fine. Edgar, yes, you're nineteen. Yeah, I've I had a girlfriend for three years, and we started having sex almost right away, and um, she was a virgin. Mm -hmm. And now, since a month ago, she started to not want to have sex. Mm -hmm. mm. And I kind of think she was cheating on me, but no, I'm not. But she uh, you know, the, uh, cheating on me with the uh, slightly uh, Latino accent. Yeah. Sounds like assing on me. <laughs> say, uh, say it again. Cheating? <laughs> she was cheating on me. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I'm Chihuahua. I think we can get away with that. I think. I think. Now, what was she doing on you again? <laughs> she was cheating on me. <laughs> well, can we move on, please? <laughs> All right, Anderson wants to move on. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Anderson really is the man of this show. Yeah, he, he's, he's, he's the, the voice he's of authority. The, he's the censor. Yeah, I didn't know the Mexicans were into that stuff. I thought that 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 uh, whole uh, coffee table business was for uh, was for the gringos. But uh, all right, so she's crapping on you, and now what? I don't see what the problem is. We're both into well, it. No, she's not cheating on you. She's not cheating on me. But no, um, this is this, and it's interesting how a nine-year-old guy's mind works. Well, if she's not having sex, she must be having it somewhere. Right. Exactly, yeah. No, it's that she has decided that that's something she wants to, what, retain until marriage or something? No, she she just says she doesn't feel like it. Well, there's a re something's going on. Hey, you ever, see, you ever see that Disney movie, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang? <laughs> no. Oh, no. But you can say it. But you've heard of it, right? No. Never heard of uh, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, huh? No. Never, huh? The car that flies? But just ask him to say it. All right, well, say... Well, see, it's no good then. <laughs> Say chitty, chitty, bang, bang. Chitty, sh bang, bang. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. We're going to a whole litany of words. Right? All right. Come on, that's a title, Anderson. You can't bleep that. All right, Edgar. Edgar. Yeah. He's being discriminatory if he's actually uh, bleeping. Huh? All right, but you know the car uh, Volvo? Yeah. And you know the car Saab? Yeah. All right, say those two cars. Volvo and yeah. Saab. All right. You can, do, you can do that. All right. I'm just checking you, bud. So what were you we talking about? His we're girlfriend doing a hooked is, on is, phonics? Is taking away the sex now. What does she oh. say the reason is? Does she give you any clear... Yeah, she says she doesn't just feel like it. No, any... there's a reason. No, 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 no. Maybe she resents Edgar for feeling like he forced her a little bit with the virginity thing. And then maybe accuses her of cheating as a reason. That makes her angrier still. Do you, did, does she feel like 
you kind of coaxed her into giving up her virginity, and maybe she didn't really want to do it that fast? Uh, I don't think so. There really are three possibilities, Edgar. One is she's resentful for the reasons that Adam is saying. Two is she's sort of lost interest in this relationship. Women, when they are not as into the relationship as they were, they don't feel as sexual. Or three, she has decided this is something sort of special that she wants to withhold until marriage, and she doesn't feel comfortable doing it anymore. She doesn't feel like she should have done it in the first place, and now she's holding back. Those are your three choices. So you got to ask her which one it is. All right. All right. All right. You agree All right. with me, yeah. don't you? Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. agree. Yeah. I, 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 I really think it's the. Uh, I really think it's the part where. When did you take her virginity? How how long had you two been going out? Uh, three years ago. But how long had you been going out when it happened? About six months after. Six All right. Months. All right. All right. Say the word cheetah before I hang up on you. Cheater? No, cheater was good, too. All right. That's good. That was good. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. What's going on with this society? Kid never heard of uh, Cheetah Cheetah Bang Bang. Yeah, scary. Your kids know Cheetah Cheetah Bang Bang? You just give them those Disney films? Dude, sweet. Yeah, I only know the uh, I only know the theme, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. So, oh, yeah, yeah. but all that stuff, you know, all on tapes and DVDs. Oh, yeah. Kids well, are done. But, yeah, just sit there in front of that thirty-two uh, inch TV <laughs> and glued. Oh my god! All right, let's uh, let's talk to uh, Tony, who's seventeen. Yeah. What's up? Um, I have a girlfriend. We've been going out for like four or five months now. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, every now and then when we're kissing, she'll go down on me. Not with her mouth, but, like, she'll just play with me through my pants and everything. With her hand? Yeah. Okay. That's mm-hmm. not going down. I know that's... Uh, yeah. Well, right. You say go down, that implies oral sex. Yeah, I said it wrong. All right. Um, and I was wondering, how do I know if I'm emotionally ready to have sex with her? Mm, that's what your question is? Yeah. Really? <laughs> that seems like the kind of question a 17-year-old would call our show for. Emotionally ready to have sex with her? Yeah. Well, what's that have to do with her putting her hand down your pants? Well, because, I mean, I think she's ready. But I don't why don't really you talk know. to her about it? How old is she? She's 16. Are you a virgin? Yeah. Okay. How long have you been no, with this girl? You. Yeah. What? How long have you been with her? About four or five months now. Well, she's 16. She's still pretty young. And know is, this. Is she a virgin? Yes. That I know of. Okay. Well, well I mean, here's the thing, Tony. Uh, you you don't have to worry about damaging your delicate psyche at age 17. <laughs> what you do, and, and uh, we don't really talk in these terms too often, Drew, but what guys do, especially guys like Tony, who are 17 and haven't been around the block too many times, and this may be their first real relationship, yeah. what they do have to worry about is getting hooked in. That's that's where I was going to go with this. Is that when you have sex, this is going to tighten that relationship in a way that you may not want or be ready. Yeah, for. but we we always worry about the girls in that. Oh department, no, no, he'll the, be hooked in the too. The guys a- can be, become abs- head cases. Absolutely, absolutely. That this is not not enough is made of that. I mean, oh yes, the the scenario. I'll give you the scenario. You got some chick, sixteen. She's uh, maybe had a boyfriend or two. Sometimes girls uh, mature a little faster, get started a little bit earlier. And then there's a little bit of a late bloomer type with Tony. Mm-hmm. Uh, the guy's a virgin. The guy hooks into the girl, becomes his first relationship. They start sleeping together. And six, eight months down the road, the girl uh, starts seeing another guy mm-hmm. who's on the football team or his uh, first year at junior college down oh, the street. The guy loses his mind. And uh, he's, she's like, and for her, hey, she's... Uh, She's been through a couple relationships. I'm not saying she's been around the block a thousand times, but a lot of girls by the time they're 16, getting close to 17, had a couple decent, yeah. substantial relationships. She's ready to move on. He's hooked and freaked out. Mm-hmm. And here's the problem with your first relationship as a guy. You have not gotten laid in 17 and a half years. You finally found one girl stupid enough to hold still and spread her legs for you, and you now she's dumping you. You feel like there ain't going to be another. Right. Or it's going to be, you've done the math. I got yeah. another 17 and a half years. You just you idealize it. You feel like nothing can ever replace it. There's never going to be another. It's impossible. It's, just, it's craziness. All right. And so. that, that, that not enough is made of the emotional damage. For guys. Know, for guys and girls. But yeah. guys, yeah. We don't, we don't make enough of that. All right. So James should what? Should. Uh, oh, wait a minute. That's the, Tony. Sorry. Tony does not sound like he's ready. 
If you have to ask us if you're ready, you're yeah, not ready. That's like if right. You have to, have to ask uh, how much that Rolls Royce is. <laughs> you can't afford it. That's right. I know that's an adage, but eventually, don't you have to ask how much something is? I mean, yeah, but you, they you don't have to, to cut them a but check. You don't, don't have to, oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. Well, they tell you that. You don't ask. You go okay. and I want that, and they tell you what it costs. The reason I was uh, asking our uh, caller before uh, Tony if uh, he could pronounce Volvo and Saab as uh, my. Uh, my uh, the guy who cuts my hair uh, is from uh, the, the hell is that guy from Venezuela? Yeah, Argentina. Yeah, no, no, he's from uh, he's a uh, Spain, oh. Spaniard. Oh my god! And uh, he tells me he tells me he wants to uh, trade in his uh, boba and get the sav. It's <laughs> <laughs> uh, my favorite story, and I'm like bobo. <laughs> Yes, uh, Bobo. No, no, no. Volvo. <laughs> That's what I say, Volvo. No, Bobo. No, Volvo. Goes back and forth ten times, and then I go, all right, forget about Volvo. What about the Saab? And he's like, Saab. No, I'm like, Saab. And then I say, you can say the V when you say... Bobo. Bobo. <laughs> you can say the B, no problem. Just put that on the end of the Saab. Cannot do it. Impossible for him to do it. Impossible. <laughs> I even put a pencil in the guy's mouth. I put, put a pencil in his mouth crossways and you push it out. Yeah. It goes, Vo, Vo, Vo. <laughs> Vo. It's hard to do the B when you got the uh, number two pencil he in, did it anyway. in your mouth. Still, still, still did it. Still did it. He's going to trade the Bobo in and uh, get a soft. All right, we'll uh, take ourselves a quick break. When we come back, we'll speak to uh, Melissa, who's 19, wants to know. Uh, how to get over boyfriend, wait a minute, how to get over jerk boyfriend, fights a lot, but loves him, uh -oh. wants to make it work out, wait a second, Melissa? Yeah? How long have you been with the guy? Um, we've been together for about a year and a half now. Mm -hmm. What's he do, drive a forklift, swing a hammer? No. Well, Where, well funny that you said, no, he works at Home Depot. Home Depot, with a forklift, yeah. forklift and hammers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Hold on. <sighs> See, I smell it on you guys. That's what you don't know. I don't need to know anything. I smell. <laughs> I know when I smell. That's hammers and forklifts. That's nothing but. All right, we'll take a quick break. Uh, we'll get with Melissa after this. Hey, everybody. Love Live. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. True. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. All righty. Back to the phones we go to speak to uh, Melissa. Hello. Well, yeah. Boyfriend. Boyfriend works at the Home Depot. Yeah. And oh, uh, we've been going out. We've known each other for nice. three years. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. We've been going out for over a year. We lived together for almost a year. And I just recently moved back to my parents because uh, it didn't work out between us. Yeah. And we had a house, and we were planning on, you know, a lot of things together in the future. And What happened? Um, Basically, he has, like, when I went to a vacation with him and his family, they were telling me about how, like, things run in the family. And I guess he has, I don't know, I think he has a really bad depression problem. And he's, he's sometimes, like talks to me like I don't like how he talks to me like rude and yeah. dumb and dumb and so he's, he's so, abusive and then no one has to put up with that and, and everybody says it's like verbally abuse and I, I, I don't know I like don't I like saying the word so you don't you don't like to say b verbal abuse yeah that's yeah. what everybody's telling me well yeah. that's what it is I mean you described it in a nutshell well how's his family his family well it's mostly like his aunt and like just recently I guess um, his parents uh, split up, and his mom said his dad was the same way. Because me and yeah. his family and his mom were all like, I'm really close to them. Yeah. Do you have any kids with this guy? No. Uh, no. Good. Not you. Yet. You. Not good. yet. Well, no. We we actually just recently talked about it. Having, I was like, I don't know. Now, why would you want to be with an abusive person? Well, he said that I don't know. No. He's going back to him saying he's going to change. But well, he, he guess what? No, not in, eh, six, eight years of therapy, maybe. But uh, he's not going to change. And you know, is he drinking when he gets this way too? No, he doesn't drink. Yeah. Does he do anything else? Smoke pot or do drugs? He well, 
but every day. Um, almost. Kind of. All right, so that makes him more irritable and gives him more. So he's a, he's a marijuana. Was your dad an addict of some type? Was my dad? Yeah. Yeah, he was. Yeah, hey. he, he was sort of an abusive a hole too. Yeah, not towards me though. All right, no, but it, it gets where you know one one of the ways you can look at that pattern is you, you don't notice it, you don't see it, you don't feel it the way you should. You're sort of dissociated from those feelings. This guy is an abusive addict. Well, also, dad was abusive toward your mom. Yeah, and maybe he missed you, but. This guy hasn't missed you. I mean, you're now the mom with the abusive dad, but, or the right. abusive I husband. Mean, but, it, but being around that abuse sort of desensitizes you to it. You don't, don't, you're not even aware that it's abuse on some level. Yeah, but but either way, it, it, it works its magic because yes. even if you weren't abused as a kid, you saw mom being abused, and then you became attracted to a guy who's verbally abusive. Of course. All right, so, Melissa, and you've been with this guy for some years now? Yeah. And you're, yeah, ni yeah. And you're 19? Mm-hmm. I, I think it's time to move on. Thank God you don't have a kid. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, and you, I'm trying to, but it's just like, it's kind of hard. You really should go to Al-Anon also and uh, you do some work so you change in such a way that you don't next time get attracted to this kind of guy. Mm -hmm. You got you to change what's going on in your head. Yeah, man. Dude. Guy, dude, bro. Sahara? Yeah. You're 19? Uh-huh. What's up? Well, um... I think I'd be in a pattern in relationships. I'm kind of assertive with guys. I always ask them out, mm -hmm. and they always seem to end the relationships. I don't know if there's something I'm missing. How long before they end it? Um, the shortest one was maybe two weeks, the longest one, two months. And they end, did they say why they're ending it? Uh, various reasons. You know, that it's not You're fat. You. True, please. It's not you, it's me. Yeah, that one. <laughs> um... But no, I'm not fat. I'm just, I'm kind of assertive. I've been told I'm intimidating. I'm tall and I work on cars and I'm assertive. Yeah. Yeah, that, the guys like that. Don't, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I don't want to burst your bubble, yeah. but m many, there's been many times when someone has tried to pass that off on us and yeah. it never seems to work, which is, you know, her problem is that she's too good looking. She speaks her mind. Yeah. She's tall. She's very striking looking. Yeah. And uh, she can. Uh, she can she can she can make waffles, program the TiVo, and uh, go ahead and drop the tranny, the Buick, all simultaneously. And well, let me tell you about guys. They are like fine the, with yeah. that. Less guys have uh, to do, the happier they are. If I could find a woman who could do anything except for complain. It would be amazing to me. It'd be great. I oftentimes talk to my male friends about this. Uh, so there's something you're doing that's uh, doing it, and it's not. It's not you wrenching on cars. It could be the guys you pick or the fact that they're not... You, maybe the intimidation part is you really coerce them into going out. You kind of push them into a relationship that they maybe don't want to be in, that kind of thing. Because <clears throat> guys do that, too. Guys guys sort of work a woman until she capitulates to a relationship. You know a lot about cars? Yeah. Oh, I yeah? don't mind. You did? Yeah. What do you got? A 1970 Oldsmobile Cutlass. Wow. And what'd you do to it? Well, I've been rebuilding the system... Uh, bit by bit, rebuilt the engine, the transmission. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Can I quiz you? Um, yeah, I don't have a... I'm usually working with a book, but yeah, you can mm -hmm. quiz me. All right. I'm going to ask some basic questions. Difference between rod bearings and main bearings? I don't know. See, okay. This is, this is what I'm telling you, Drew. This is why. She's so intimidating. She knows so much. Don't know the difference between rod bearings and main bearings, baby? That's very basic. Well, I mean, if you're rebuilding the engine, huh? What? They're laughing at her. They should be laughing at you. Oh, uh, hey, now, how many guys do you know that have, you know, rebuilt the engine themselves? Well. And got it machined and then put it together. I know a lot of guys have <laughs> rebuilt the engines themselves, but all right, all right, all right. We're just going to, uh, we're going to move forward here. All right. The, uh, the main seal. On the car, where would that be? The main... The rear main seal. The rear main seal? Yes. Would that be on the differential? No. Mm -hmm. No, be at the end of the crank before it went into the bell housing. But that's all right. That's all right. All right. Let's move forward now. Asking guys out. Intimidating okay. guys. Yeah, what about just sort of asking the wrong guys out? Are these guys that, that you have to kind of coerce into dating and coerce into a relationship? No, usually really we start out as friends and 
I'll ask him out and I'll say yes, and it's oh, a casual there, thing. That's already no, 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 no. That's the problem. There's, there's a reason you're a friend in the first place. Guys, if they're interested, don't let things sort of drift into friendville. No, no. no. So no she drag kicking and screaming in a friend. And you know, she said it's like, oh, it's casual. It's no big deal. No, big, wait, I'm just asking them out. No big deal. That, that's right. It's no big deal to them. They're not thinking of you as a date or a girlfriend. They still want to keep you in friend land. All right, but here's the thing, too. Also, at 19, I know I sound like a broken record with this. You don't have to figure it all out. Forget about your technique. You're, you're not. People think they've been banished to a certain certain existence you know i'll right. always be the friend that never i'll always be the guy that doesn't it, it doesn't work that way no. you different experiences you mature you meet different people there's no right or wrong way to do it really just just move forward stay keep your eyes open whatever you're interested in i mean she's mrs good wrench over here right she can she can build a small block chevy no problem <laughs> <laughs> Except for the rod bearings and the main bearings. <laughs> but uh no problem. So just 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 move forward and don't worry about it. You will find you will find a guy. Everyone I er, by the way, everyone I know eventually found somebody. Oh yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and I know That's the amazing thing about an, the human being. An amazingly diverse group of people who are into a million different things and they all found somebody. Yeah. You you will too. Someone who shares your um your claimed interest in automobiles, perhaps. Ken? Yeah. You're 19? Yeah. What's up? Hey, um, first of all, I just want to let you know that you guys are great. You guys Thanks. Are the people. Thanks. But um, I'm calling because my, one of my ex-girlfriends, who we, uh, we were sexually active about two to three months ago, she called me up last week and told me that she tested positive for chlamydia. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm trying to like find out what the risk would be since we use condoms for me and my new girlfriend to have it. And I know I gotta go in and get tested, but where would I go? Well, you just any doctor, I, any doctor can do it. There's lots of good tests now available for that. All right. If uh, um, I was just worried about like going to my insurance because I don't want my parents to find out, you know. Well, you go to Planned Parenthood then. No. Um. Yeah. I don't, no. Yeah, I guess I should do that. Uh, so you have no symptoms. No. And, well, what are the chlamydia symptoms for a guy? Discharge, pain with urination, oh. that kind of thing. Sometimes nothing, but and you're using a condom with your current girlfriend, right? Yes. So you could not have transmitted it to her, which is a good thing. So, yeah, you uh, got to just go get tested. It's a simple thing to treat these days with a single dose of an antibiotic. Okay. Um, and, I've talked to a few of my friends, and they said it's cleared up, but like while you're taking the medicine, you can't have sex or be sex, like do anything, correct? Yeah, it's no one, do one dose, Ken. One dose. Oh, one, yeah, one you you got to lay low for one day? Not even, just... Half a day oh. for, while you're in the doctor's office. No sex in the doctor's no office. No banging any nurses or candy stripers. Right. Interesting. No, you, you'd probably wait a day or two, but but uh, you know okay. you're I using condom like anyway. You know, I, I one of the things I did in New York was met with the Trojan people. So mm -hmm. I'm going to get more involved in New there. York. Yeah, they're they're uh, they're good people. I mean, they really wanted to try to help kids and build coalitions. The stuff I've been yelling about for years. About I see uh, a picture like uh, guys wearing uh, tunics and uh, chest plates. Yeah, big hats with a big fan on top. Big fan, big rope fan on the top. Guys greeting you with that handshake where your hands go. You do this handshake where you grab all the way yes. to the inside. Yes. Yes. The <laughs> you grab hand. each other's forearms and shake them well, heartily. You have those. You have those metal bands up to your mid forearm. That's <laughs> right. Then they're like trying to hammer it out with Drew and his people. And and they call like, you brother. We see. <sighs> Well, let's say uh, 150 grand over the course of five spots, which also includes uh, three personal appearances <laughs> and two satellite radio tours. And then Drew's people say, uh, four spots and one satellite. And you hear the swords start to come out. <laughs> 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 Is that how it works? And, and when you shake hands, it makes that, that noise. Right? Shing, the, yeah. The, pow. You're my brother. Right. Is that they talk a lot like that? Like? Yeah, brother. Yeah. And uh, they give you like a big chalice full of something, like some sure. ale or with, something you know, in there. With some, some big fine, mutton chop you're swinging around. Stones around the outside. Yeah. 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 Really, it's just a bunch of queers in bad suits, though, right? No. All right. Good All right. Love Line is brought to you by Trojan, America's number one condom. Let's uh, take ourselves a little break, and uh, we'll be right back after this.
Hey, everybody. Love line, I'm Adam. That is Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. And it's back to the phones we go. Speaking to uh, Scott, who's 21. Scott? Yeah. What's up? Well, um, I was wondering um, if you could tell me what time the uh, ov- um, ovulation period for a female is. Simply what? because uh, my girlfriend had, uh, her mom had ovulation cancer at, uh, ovulation ovarian cancer. cancer at the age of 16. Ovarian. Age 16? Mm-hmm. No. No. What, what, what happened? Tell me what she had. Or what, well, what the... um, she was set up to uh, have ovarian cancer. She was diagnosed with ovarian cancer at the age of 16. She wasn't supposed to be able to have kids, and she had two kids, and her younger son died. Well, she didn't have ovarian cancer. She may have had an ovarian tumor or something. Right. That's not ovarian cancer. It's very no. very common for there to be tumors in the ovary, dermoid tumors. That well, and she was di- I think she was diagnosed with some kind of cancer. Nope. Not at all. Well, not with ovarian cancer. Not right, not well, then having kids and not in, you know not at sixteen. Well, uh, my girlfriend is uh, been having cramps during what she believes to be her ovulation period. That's normal. And she believes that it's thirteen to eighteen Scott, days. Scott, you're twenty one. Hmm. Yeah. Well, it's not like a fourteen year old. He sounds young, but uh, maybe he's just in good shape. Right. Says so fit, thinks young. <laughs> All right. well, good, she's been good. Having cramps during what she believes to be her ovulation period. Right. I was wondering which if which would be n- which would be normal. That's, That's normal, buddy. Okay, so it is thirteen to eighteen days then. Yeah, yeah, usually eighteen days. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, listen, the cramps, the cramping during all different times the this menstrual cycle can be normal, or it can be a sign of ovarian cysts, or which are nothing. I hate the fact that so much is made of ovarian cyst or endometriosis, which can become a problem, uh, or just the usual, what's called dysmenorrhea, the inflammation of, of the various phases of the menstrual cycle can cause cramps. Let's say the period ends on the first of the month. Most women ovulate on the 18th or yeah. the 15th? Mm, 18. More 18. Yeah. Okay. And that ovulation is like a two-day period cut takes takes a couple of days how does the, that work the, it's w- in terms of what your fertility period is yeah like, it's usually 24 hours just 24 hours yeah. holy mother of pearl yeah the so, sperm is what lasts for the four days uh, it hangs around waiting for that one day see? Mm-hmm. so so the actual inter- your, intercourse uh, that causes pregnancy can be within four days of the ovulation mm-hmm obviously before before yeah so sperm just uh lurking around yeah waiting sitting around smoking cigarettes staying around a uh a, i guess during trash the winter they got trash fire, can yeah. they lit yeah. on fire yeah. comes like a scene from rocky when he's jogging down the street and the guys are all hey rock was that's the one sperm that's making its way to the egg yeah. yo spermy go buddy and they're all just sitting around <laughs> April? Hello? You're 19? Right. What is up? I just wanted to know, I have it in my head that I heard it somewhere, that when you're trying to smoke pot, if you get on an antidepressant, that it makes it, like, easier. To, to try to stop smoking pot? Right. It There's really no good scientific evidence for that. It might. Uh, depressions, when you stop smoking, are really common, and certainly that should be managed, and they can be, actually be quite dangerous, the depressions people get. But you're not going to stop smoking pot unless you get involved in a 12-step program of some type. And what's a, what do you mean a 12-step program? Uh, Marijuana Anonymous. You, you need to be treated. It's it's something that requires treatment. It's very common. You'll, you'll fight a whole bunch of people just like yourself at the meeting. And uh, there's things you got to do in order to get over this thing. It's it's an you've illness. You've been you've been uh, smoking pot says here since you were 14. Yeah, well, that was like the first time I smoked pot. I've been smoking pot regularly, like on a regular basis for the last three years. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's very hard to say. Yeah, very uh, on a daily basis. Probably like five out of seven days of the week. Yeah, that's tough. It's not an easy one to stop. Mm-mm. And it, it requires treatment. Like why don't any other you go to AMA? Meet some nice dude. I don't. Well, I'm married. I don't need to meet a nice dude. But I don't think we have that here. Like, I've never heard of it around here. They're everywhere. Call, if, you, if you have a question, call Alcoholics Anonymous. They'll refer you to an MA meeting. Um, you got well, married already, huh? Yeah, I'm married. Why so young? <laughs> I always said that I was going to wait till I was 25, but the guy that I married is an absolute sweetheart. He's wonderful. He doesn't smoke pot or anything. Mm. 
It's funny. She, the way she said absolute sweetheart sounded like I asked to sweep heart or something. It's like it's a, a weird, it sounded like a weird title. A weird title. He's my Prince Charming. He is. Yes. He's your what? Prince Charming. Oh. How uh, how old is he? He's 23. 23. Mm-hmm. Eh, sounds like a dynamite individual. He is. He's well, April, you got to take care I of this trust problem. this guy. What's, <laughs> what's he do? Huh? What's he do, this guy? What do you mean, what does he do? For a living. Oh, he works for the um, IRS. Wow. Accountant. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, if I call AA, they'll... They'll refer you to MA. Listen, are you, tr- you going to try to have kids? In the future, not anytime yeah. soon. You can't, you can't be a mom and be addicted to pot. You can't have somebody in your uterus while you're smoking pot, and you can't really be available in a way a child needs you to be attuned if you're loaded. Right, and I understand all that. That's yeah. why okay. I really want to stop now. Okay. All, all right, but it, it takes time. It takes some right. work. But uh, check out the MA. We're not worried about it. Especially, April. especially when you She's start fine. smoking when you're fourteen, fifteen. Well, you actually start regularly when you're sixteen. A lot of development you would have been going through during that time when you were sixteen, seventeen, eighteen actually doesn't happen. The the, the pot tends to block some of the brain development. Yeah, good times. Yeah, yeah. Robert. Yeah. Twenty nine. Yes, sir. What's up? Well, I was. Um, I've been listening to you guys, and uh, I noticed that a lot of women when they when they call in, you ask them uh, where their father is or if their father left them mm-hmm. at a young age. Mm-hmm. And I was wondering, uh, does that affect men also? A little bit. Yeah, a little different. Different. And women, it tends to have a pretty profound imprint on the kind of man they, they choose. In other words, there's unfinished business there. They've got to sort of make good. They've got to find dad and reconnect. Right. With men... Uh, the dad really serves a containment function and a modeling function. And so the, a lot of the, one, one of the common things you see with young males that didn't have a father is difficulty containing aggression. Mm-hmm. So they, have, they sort of act out more. Yeah, they don't, they don't tend to uh, listen to their mom as much. I mean, oh. uh, they're driving in the car and the mom is yelling, be quiet, and they don't yeah. tend to listen. But yeah. when the dad yells, be quiet, they listen. Yeah. But when there's no dad around, then they have a little difficulty. This is uh, what's going on in the black community. Not enough dads around, and now too many kids run around beating the crap out of each other and shooting each other. Can't contain it. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. It, no. it, it'll work that way for any... doesn't matter what color your skin is, by the way. If right. we, you, you get rid of... You, get, you take dad out of the equation, and you usually have, you have boys that sort of run around and beat on, uh, beat other, on other boys. Yeah. Right. So, uh, but no, in general, men's psyches are uh, not as delicate as women. And, you know, that's good and that's bad. Sort of, sort of the, uh, eh, uh, we sort of have the psyches of, uh, we're sort of like uh, old Volkswagen bugs, you know. You can get us, you can keep us running. It's uh, no big deal. The old theories are that we're actually worse off because we, we never can fully, um, yeah, but we don't know what we're missing. Well, we can't ever solve that. You know what I mean? We always want to be mom, part of mom, that kind of thing, and never. And girls can identify with mom, and therefore feel part so, of mom. Well, that's sort of what the early development's about, right? So, uh, so then, like, men aren't searching for moms, then if they're well, they, they they do. Well, moms don't abandon. Is that's a kind of a rare situation when moms yeah. abandon? It, it de- and it depends too, because uh, certain cultures, like if you got. You know, I've been noticing this. I've been doing a little study myself, Robert. <laughs> and uh, all my friends that had sort of uh, powerful moms who wore the pants in the family all got hooked up with uh, uh, what I would lovingly call ball-busting <laughs> wives. They need excitement. I, I don't know what this is, but Drew and I were talking about it the other day, which it, it never seems like both parents are equal. Usually right. your mother, your father, one of them sort of, the general and the other one's the private. Or yeah. maybe one's the general and the other one's maybe the colonel yeah, yeah. or something like yeah. that. You know, yeah. there's always seems to one sort of dominating. Yeah. It, it works this way with every partnership. A power structure. Yeah, it's always a power Anytime, structure. I don't know if it's a creative partnership, yeah. whatever the business, whatever the partnership is, yeah. one person sort of runs point. Yes. One person says, no, I'm driving and here's where we're going. Yeah. You're the, J- Jimmy's the general and you're like the, the drum major. The yeah, I'm, I'm, the little, I'm the guy the playing the flute, flute. limping, okay. yeah, limping. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, so this is what happens, and and parents do this, and in the relationships I know where the mom was the general and sort of driving the relationship, much of all all Jewish relationships are this way, really. The the kid ends up getting attracted to strong, 
somewhat domineering or just sort of women that have energy. You know, they get hooked up with uh, women that uh, are, they become the general. That's, that's, that's one of the trends I've noticed. But other than that, not too many. With, got, with guys. Yeah, yeah, guys Guys in general, it's, uh, they're, they're kind of uh, washing machines, and women are sort of delicate instrumentation. Watches. They need to be calibrated. <laughs> you can't get them wet. You can't leave them outside. I mean, they have to be looked after. Right. And, it, and if they get kicked around, they don't take it that well. They get their calibration gets off later in life, yeah, and they end up they end up not perform. They can't make their decision making gets yeah. screwed up. Yeah. All right, so Robert, yes, I don't know uh, what's your question now. Yeah, you're we, fine. We got to go to break. Have a good time, so right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Is it is if males just don't beat on them? Yeah. That's it. And once in a while, the super domineering mom can get the son to go gay, but that's about that's a. That's the biggest impact they're ever going to have, right? I, I, True. It's a wonder you're not uh, running your own cabaret right now. <laughs> and we'll be back. <laughs> hey, everybody. Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. All right there, Drewski Bopples. <laughs> you get the Christmas tree up at your house? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. It's nice. How about you? Yeah. Mm. Smells good. Have Oops. you ever had a Christmas tree in your house? Yeah. I always get a Christmas tree. Really? Don't just lean a bow up against the fireplace? No. Like, that, the, like that, the roll of tradition? Well, the Corollas have two traditions for Christmas trees. Uh, one is is uh, cutting a branch off the dying pine tree that's in the front of the house and uh, leaning it up against the wall and decorating that. We did that one year. That was uh, Charlie Brown times two. How does your mom defend that one? Do you bring that one up ever? Oh, uh, oh yeah. yeah. Christmas <laughs> oh, trees, yeah, no doubt. Christmas yeah. trees cost money. I see. I mean, listen, you're, you're poor. You, you don't got... You got twenty bucks to throw around at uh, something that you're going to toss out in two weeks. Yeah, I mean that, that's a uh, well. It's not. I mean, here's the thing. My my family was was legitimately poor, but they thought, thought poor. like uh, they were living on the street, you know. And th- that kind of all the stuff that you would do for you that doesn't have to do with eating or uh, clothing, you know, sort of non survival stuff. The uh, the vacations, the Christmas trees, the uh, nice set of chrome rims for your car, all that sort of extra stuff, jewelry, what have you. Uh, no way. No. That stuff's that's uh, that's into the realm of the fantasy world. <laughs> that that does not happen. No. Well, we'd usually get a tree, though, but it would be like uh, you'd have to we'd drive down to... Uh, drive down to downtown and wait for him to uh, unload him off the train and then get him for like a 10 bucks cheaper and then oh, you do that schlep it on so the you did r- get trees yeah 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 o- only only uh oh we got we got uh we might not have a tree every year i oh, i'm i'm a little unclear on that probably not yeah but the one year we did the branch the branch is bad because the branch is uh really just sort of two-dimensional yeah you lean it against the wall yeah you cut a branch down it's flat you know what I mean? It doesn't have much body to it. Sort of a reminder, too. It's like I, I'd say better. Yeah. We should have just pretended we were Jewish or something, yeah. but then that would have been the eight presents of Hanukkah, and that would have been a monumental task to pull off. But, yes, yes, ah, here's what it is. My, uh, I spent a fair, fair amount of time at my grandparents' house, uh. and my grandparents had a rubber tree plant mm. that was in a planter. And you decorated it was in their living room. Yes. Uh, Grandparents nice. never got a Christmas tree. Nice. They decorated a rubber tree plant. Nothing further That's from your a grandfather. Pi- than a pine tree. No, that was my grandma, too. Uh. Nothing further from a pine tree than a rubber tree plant. And, uh, yeah, the branch, sometimes no tree. And then usually uh, you get the Charlie Brown size uh, tree. Because, yeah. you know, like I said, it's 18 bucks. It's not the $27 one that's, uh, you know, that's going to break you for the year. Yes, Drew. Yes, if you ever close your eyes and picture the rubber tree plant, that's uh, that's all. I I, I don't know. Just you claim your family was cheap, but I don't think you know the the, the depth <laughs> of my family's cheapness. I don't think you have any idea. No, I'm getting it. 
You're starting to get it now? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Painful. Rubber tree plants? Yeah. Branches from the tree? You, you, that's sinking in? Good time. Yes, and the branch from the tree really is like... You, you might might as well just uh, write loser on the inside of a pair of sunglasses and just put them on for two weeks. Yeah. Because you just, that that just smacks. Is that this? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Rubber tree plant branch. Oh, God. Oh, I can't believe I come from those people. Samantha? Uh-huh. You're 15? Yes, I am. What's up? Um, well, I just broke up with my boyfriend today, and we have been going out for a couple weeks. And this Friday, I cheated on him. Mm-hmm. And what what does that mean, cheated? I hooked up with one of his friends. What do you mean hooked up? Well, that's I code. Was cheated. Well, did you have sex with him? No, I didn't. That's what a hookup is. Well, okay. cheating and cheating. You know, when you cheat on somebody, normally it means that you had sex, right? With but somebody. This is fifteen-year-old version. Okay. Right, right. What'd you do? Just you made out? Oh, more than that. Oral sex? Yeah. Oh boy. You uh, performed some oral sex on the guy? I didn't. No. He did on you. Yeah. Well, that's quaint. Yeah. So, um, we broke up today. <laughs> so why? Uh, why didn't you perform some on him uh, after he performed it on you? I didn't want to. <laughs> You're not that kind of girl. No. And. Uh, I said that sort of facetiously. Yeah. And now this guy was a, a new trend here. This guy's a good friend of your boyfriend's? Well, he, my boyfriend thinks so, but m- the way that he talks about him, the guy that I cheated on him with, it it doesn't seem like it. But my boyfriend seems to think that they're well, I, t- But to be fair, the guy's not going to talk up your boyfriend yeah. too much while he's attempting to uh, go down on you. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's sort okay. of telling the, making the soil... Yeah. Right. right. Yeah, talk about, though, a uh, little slap in the face for the boyfriend if yeah. you're the guy's buddy. I mean, yeah. it's it, it's almost worse than just having sex with the person, yeah. is it not? Yeah. Okay. Well, what what happened? Did your boyfriend cheat on you? No. He did, he's, such, he's a really, really good guy. You That's know, the like, problem. Uh, so she can't be with a nice guy. Yeah, you I need can't. a little chaos. Yeah. yeah. You need a bad boy. That's exactly what I need. And he didn't know that I cheated on him, so it was such like a shocked me when he told me that he wanted to break up. And I was so hurt. But it's like... Oh, how dare he? How dare he, that guy? Temerity. How dare he? Uh, yeah, well, why did he want to break up with you if he didn't know about so this? So classic. He's like, he's like, you know, I didn't really know you, and um, we weren't right for each other. And I was wow. like, well, what was the difference from two days ago? Yeah, yeah. He woke up and yeah. discovered he was a healthy guy. That's right. And He's then, normal. And he doesn't want to be involved in your chaos. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. There you go. There you go. So now what? If you want nice guys like that, don't. <coughs> oh, nice. What? What? What's up now? You what's smoke cigarettes? Do I? Yeah. No. What's okay. the matter? So you broke up with a guy. A guy broke up with you, and you weren't really that into him anyway. So what do you care? Well, I didn't realize I wasn't until he broke up with me. Yeah. See. Only because. Sharp move by the guy, because. Yeah. You would have, here's where this was heading. You'd probably screw around with another friend or two and right. then dump him. Right. No, no, they, then make him walk in on you with someone. Right. It would have been some trauma the, for the guy. But now the guy does a preemptive strike, oh. dumps you, and your head is uh, spinning like a dreidel. It's and you got to have him back. Bot exploding. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does not compute. And uh, good. Well, it's good that he dumped you. Yep. That's, that's good for him. Okay. And this guy is very normal. But, Samantha, you got to work on this need for chaos and the badness. Yeah. Yeah. There's a reason for that. Where's your dad? He's here. Yeah? Yeah. You you love him? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, He's here. Uh Uh, What's wrong? Where's the chaos coming Um, from? I'm adopted. How old were you when you were adopted? I was adopted pretty much at birth. Pretty much. I just found out a year ago that I had a brother, a full blood brother, but he lives with my mom. Uh-huh. My birth mom. So he lives with your birth mom. Yeah, and she called me drunk and told me this. The mom did. Yeah. So and it's got to be kind of weird that she kept him and gave you away. Yeah. I how, mean, how I old were you when you were adopted? Went pretty much at birth. Well, how old? Like couple days. Okay. I guess. Couple right. days. Right. And yeah. Just that's at birth, and and your brother, your your blood brother. Uh huh. He's 
younger than you are? He's older. He's like a year older than me. Oh, that's weird. That is weird. Yeah. Younger, I could, uh, you know, if the guy was uh, five years younger, I could see that. She, she had you, wasn't she ready had, to have yeah. a kid, but had a one-year-old, kept him. Do you really know that he's younger? No, he's older. And I'm younger. I mean older. older. I beg your yeah. pardon. Do you, really, yeah. do you really know that he's older? Yeah, I sure. do. He is. Okay. Because he didn't know, she didn't tell him about me until like a month later. So I was stuck not, you know, him not knowing about me. And then yeah. in March, we met for the first time. Do you live in the same town? No, they live in Florida. Shocking. Uh, and uh, what was that like meeting him? It was the, it was the weirdest thing. Yeah. Was, and I met her, too, for the first time. Ooh. So. And that was weird, too, yeah, right? Like a, uh, oh, so maybe the, maybe this is, maybe this, the chaos you're injecting into your life is a temporary thing in response to all this crap you're trying to deal with. Like, I don't know. I mean, my life is, uh, you know, like I've always needed chaos in my life. Have you? Yeah. All right. Not a good well, thing. Not a good all right, thing, but Samantha. You're, here's the thing now, uh, Samantha. You're 15, and you're coming to a point where chaos, before it, it's uh, just a bunch of schoolyard stuff. Now it's going to be bigger things. It's it's going to be it's going to be pregnancies and venereal diseases. It's going to be arrests and ex- expulsion from schools, and there's going to be trouble. There are going to be serious consequences now. One, one of the ways to think about this behavior is, that there's there there is parts of herself that she's sort of disconnected from injured parts, parts that are enraged and pain and shame, and the only way she can experience them is by being with bad people. Right. It really is a part of herself that she experiences when she's with these guys. When a guy leaves her, though, she's no longer doesn't have that part. It's like she's losing that part of herself. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. All right. All right. Well, you know what's going on, and it's time to get a handle on it. Yeah. Jody. Yeah. And as far as the guy, it's good that he dumped you. Oh, yeah. He screwed around with his best friend. Uh, Not you, Jody. What's up, buddy? Baby. <laughs> oh, hi, Adam and Drew. Hey, hey Jody. Um, basically, ever since my husband and I had our son, who's two, we, our relationship hasn't been going as well. Why? And now he's lost. He got laid off from his job, and I'm worried that this is just going to be the last straw. And I need some advice on, one, how to help a gentleman cope with this because... Um, I know men are very sensitive about their jobs, and to how to maybe improve our relationship. Yeah. What kind of job did he get uh, laid off from? Application architect. It's a computer position. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Is he good at what he does? He's, yeah, he's good. Yeah, sound like a fan. Whoa. And uh, Rousing endorsement. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. I was yeah. going to hire him, but no. Yeah. Yeah, I'm better. You're better. You do that, too? Yeah. All right. Uh, you, do you work on those CAD machines? Um, no, it's not that type of architecture. It's like building software applications for companies and making it's all It's a software things. architecture, not building architecture. I see. And uh, it sounds like you're both sort of professionals, though, and you could, uh, even though you're better than he is, he could get another gig somewhere, right? Yeah, the market's it's really bad right now. Really? They've laid everybody off in Silicon Valley lately. Wow. They have bad times. Yeah. Hey, Merry Christmas, though, right? Yeah, it was real nice of them. Yeah, so do, do you you think he's going to get depressed about it, or he has gotten depressed about it? Uh, Well, yeah, he's kind of just moping around the house, not doing And, and what much. was the problem with your relationship? Oh, we just argue all the time because I don't think he helps enough, and mm. he thinks he does. And mm-hmm. What about sort of sitting down and deciding what you guys, what your priorities are in life together? And what you want to work on together and do together, and I mean, it's an opportunity for maybe a new beginning here too. Okay. To really, really sort of map out a life together. What What does our life together mean? What is it going to be? Well, we've done that before, and we kind of agree on everything except for two fine points: how much attention the kids should get, and how much money should be spent. S- well, spent on what? Always, uh, on money. Anything. He's a He's a Scrooge, and I, I probably. I don't spend too much, but I, I spend a little bit. Well, okay, yeah. budget things. You got budgets, build you know, compromise. But I, again, it's not. I, I think more philosophically and more, you know, what you want from life, not how many kids we're going to have, who's going to stay at home. Those are just sort of functional things that you, you, you know, you, you right. decide. 
what, you know, what do we want? What do we want here? You're, you don't have a job. We, maybe we want to move to Wisconsin and then start a live big farm. I mean, whatever. What, what are we really looking for and how do we get there? Well, Spend some done time. that. And if you ask well, then forget him, it. Then there's nothing we have. <laughs> well, let me give yeah. his answer, and this is why we fight, too, is he wants to consume media. This is his goal in life. Consume media? Yeah, and watch TV and play video games. Mm-hmm. And I, I can't stand it. All right, well, here's the... Uh, uh, right, hold on, let me that, talk to Drew if, that, if that's true, he needs to see a psychiatrist, because that's a, that's a flaw. Here's the thing. Um... Jody sounds like a mild ball buster. Angry. Angry. Yeah. She's a little angry at this guy. Yeah. And when when you're angry, it's hard to just deal with whatever yeah. the, the task at hand is because you're PO'd. Mm-hmm. It's like you, driving with somebody who's angry and they're in the seat next to you and you go, geez, should we take uh yeah. should we should we take Melrose or yeah. should we hop on the van? And they go, I don't know, you're the genius. Why don't you tell me? Yes, right. You know, it's like right. and you're going well, geez, I just asked uh, right. how we should get to the theater, right. and it, it's impossible to get anything done. Yeah, it really. And is. Jody's uh, Jody's a little pissed at this guy. Maybe I'm not saying uh, without merit, but you're angry. Guilty as charged. Yeah. All right, yeah, and yeah. so the the thing about you worried about you're worrying about him being depressed because he lost his job. That's not really the situation. You're angry at this guy for not sort of stepping up and being a man, and he's too worried about video games and his own sensitive feelings and putting on a pair of pants and some boots and being a man. Am I right? Thank you. <laughs> okay. So you got to sort of deal with your anger toward this guy. Yeah, but, it, but that's not going to work out by you trying to be, be sympathetic toward him because he lost his job. She's got to deal with that, but it, it sounds like it's she's angry with some aspects of him which... It could be pretty frustrating to deal with. Well, yeah, he and, he and, deserves it too. Yeah, I'm and sure he needs some real help. If he is detaching from his relationship and spending times communing with a video screen, and he's got a wife and child, that is kind of serious ass. Thing. Okay, so he's got work to do, but yeah. uh, Jody can't pretend like he doesn't, and can't pretend like she's not angry right. that he hasn't. Right, she shouldn't pretend like she's not angry. She's angry. She's go ahead and get angry, and just and we may work on that too. And believe me, the people who you're angry at would much rather have you tell them they're angry, you're angry at them, than just walk around PO'd or, for five years. And then, the, and also, men men are pretty clueless. They're kind of confused. Unless you tell us exactly what's going on, we, we don't necessarily pick up the hands. Like, well, let, let me tell you how it works for men. If a woman is angry who you're living with, yeah. uh, let me tell you how that, that translates. She's a bitch. I don't know what her problem is. <laughs> That's what guys do. Yeah. yeah. She's always PO'd. I don't know. It must blow, be a period. Blowing it? up on me, blowing up, getting all my grill about nothing. I don't even know what it is. I'll tell you what, I'm no 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 hurry to go home. Yeah. That's how it works. And then when they do go home, they hide out video games. Yeah, well, for me, it's porn. But yeah. Whatever. Cindy. That's great. Yes. You're 29. Yes. What's up? Um, well, I have a couple questions here. I have a, I'm, We're having a problem with my um, brother in law. Yeah. Um, the problem is is that he has a girlfriend who has a, a chronic pain condition, yeah. which means that she has access to all kinds of, of painkillers. I, I know that she has Dilaudid. She has a bottle of Demerol. She has um, fentanyl lollipops. And, um, What's probably, sen- uh, what? Fentanyl. It's a synthetic opiate. It's a what? Morph- morphine yeah. derivative. What, Why are they what called is- lollipops? They make them for kids, I think, for like kids with cancer and stuff. What is the source of her pain? Uh, ooh, well, she has lupus. She has lupus. Yeah. And, and what are the manifestations of the lupus? Well, I don't know what her particular manifestations are. I just know that she is a frequent flyer visitor to the ERs on a weekly basis. Yeah, but I, I'm wondering, I have to question the accuracy of the diagnosis. Uh, yeah, me too. Me and, too. And because a lot of people get fibromyalgia and lupus type diagnoses. Exactly. And, and uh, get on opiates and then magically have chronic pain and then go nuts with the opiates. If she comes from a family history of alcoholism, if she has a history of trauma in her background, then I would virtually guarantee that this is primarily addiction. I, 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 I completely agree with you. My problem, though, is, is not so much with her, but with my husband's younger brother yeah. who lives with her. Right. Yeah. And um, he, he has been, you know, he's now lost his job and just stays home all the time. Oh, boy. And we figured he was probably having, you know, she, he has, definitely has access to her medications. So what, what happened was we um, went and my husband actually kidnapped his brother yeah. and just 
showed up and said, you're going to come and spend a couple days with us. Right. And he's gone through all of his medications, and he's taken all of his meds, except he has Zyprexa. He let him keep that. But he's, he's got all the Ambien, all the Clonopin. Um, and what do you mean he's got all of well, it? Well, we have a rule of thumb in our unit is if, if, a, if a wife is sick enough to need inpatient chemical dependency treatment, which this woman sounds like she definitely qualifies, mm -hmm. then the husband has to be addicted too. And, okay. the, and we have found that to be almost universally true. Okay. So it suggests that he's also an addict. Right. Because only well, another addict would put up with this. Yeah, I uh, and also uh, I'm, I didn't get the part about kidnapping and taking all the guy's meds with him. Well, my husband took, took his brother... Yeah. Oh, out, of, out of the out of the household. The, the point Adam's that. making. I got that. Point what, I was what's making the part is, with all the meds? Is that if, if you if the girl if the wife has the problem, why does he have all the meds? Well, he has meds also. Right. Well, his he he kid his medications are all he had was Ambien it, and Clonopin. He didn't have any of the pain medications. I, I know, but he kidnapped his brother, and he said, "Let me take my stash with me." Right. No, 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 no. He he didn't let him. He didn't let him take it take anything with him. He just but, found all this stuff on his side of the medicine cabinet? Right. Oh, right. okay. I, I don't... So, by the way, that's... How does he know whose that is, though? That clonopin is dangerous stuff to stop abruptly, by the way. That needs to be treated. Okay. He can have okay. a seizure. That was my question. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, listen, every, uh, I'm, I'm telling you, I... <sighs> I'm just going to start a thing where we just start snuffing out uh, bad, bad seeds. You know, you marry into these uh, people, it becomes a huge pain in the ass for the uh, poor chick who wouldn't have known this guy except for she married the guy's brother, and now there's kidnapping going on. Oh, I'll tell you what. You know, I hear these stories all the time about the uh, in-law, loser brother-in-law, and loser wife and kid having to shack up at the person's place for a couple of months while they... Oh. I've put a hit on these people immediately. And look Think at... Think how good your sister is to have made you, allowed you to avoid all that. You know what by, I'm saying? By, by me buying a second house? By No, by her having a good husband and good kids and yeah. good life for them. Yeah. She's in yeah. the second house for six months, you know. I, I know. Okay. Uh, forgot. All right. Don't, come on, Drew. Don't get around. No, you know, my, my sister and her family are fine. Yeah. So, yeah. No, I mean that. No, yeah. 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 No good times. Uh -huh. yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And there's no one from my family you could get anything from. If I need $100, I'd be S out of luck for every single person in my family across the board. There's no no doubt about that. You would never get anything, anything. But if you got all your own stuff, they'll let you keep it. So that's fine. I got a lot of stuff. It's a good time. Doing good. All right, let's uh, got to go to break here. Uh, I'm going to talk real fast to uh, Clarence. Clarence? All right. Sounds like we had a little problem with the... Uh, phone line. Clarence? All right. Hang on there, Clarence. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. It's the Love Line. I'm Adam. It's a good doctor, Dr. Drew, over there. Ah. <sighs> Phone number, 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. All right. Let's talk to Martin, who's 27. Martin? We lost Clarence. Yes. yes. How you doing? Oh, it's too bad. Oh, boy. Hey, listen. Uh, yeah. I had a question. Uh, about three months ago, um, I was in a bar, and I met a woman. I didn't know who she was. And after, she, she gave me oral sex in the car. Nice. Yeah, good deal. And then, um, well, maybe not so nice. But what happened was, is um, she kind of just licked the penis a little bit, and then I put a condom on. Oh, good. Hey, yeah. see, she All gave us a little jump start. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we finished off, and I've just been kind of just a nervous wreck for about three months. I got uh, just a regular HIV test once, and then. I just got one uh, just a regular a uh, couple weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. And you're not going to get you're, fine, you're not going to get the hip from that. You're fine. Even a, and I also got the DNA test. You're fine. Oh. You, you may, if you want to get checked for chlamydia and gonorrhea and other things too and syphilis. I did. And it was all negative. You're fine. You're fine. But even even if uh, I mean, what if it was a worst case scenario? Worst case yeah. scenario and she had it, your probability if she gave you 100 blowjobs 
still be pretty low. Okay. Not when impossible. Is 100 blowjobs, not, not worst impossible. case uh, scenario, by the not way. Not impossible. So I could just go back and get 100 blowjobs. No, no, I'm not saying that because <laughs> one of them could be the one. I mean, you don't want to take right. that kind of risk, but... But the, the, you you weren't the receptive partner, which is the way in which AIDS has been shown to be transmitted. Uh-huh. I, I doubt we eliminated AIDS. Uh, Martin, the worst case scenario is a drunk driver smashing into your car while you're receiving oral and her biting your dong off. <laughs> that would be worse. That's yeah. worse. You got I'm nothing, I'm not buddy. sure a condom can protect you from that. What's man. up with you? Why are you so freaked saying, out? What's, I, I'm, just, I'm just neurotic. I, uh, yeah, you know, right. I, just, why, I get worried. Why? Why are you so neurotic? I don't know. Okay. You know, I'm just one of those guys. I just get worried. Why do you? Why I, I know, but that, a... that's that's the real tragedy. That's the real <laughs> disease here. But why... not the HIV. <laughs> no, but your, why? Your neuroses. That, if you know you're that way, why do you, why do you have a random relationship like that? Why do you get involved? Uh, with yeah, that was heavy. I, I man. have issues, and I'm trying to work them out in therapy. Mm. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, you know, so I'm. I just all. Bottom line is, I'm safe. I'm okay. You should be fine. You did. You did all the right stuff. You wore a condom during oral sex. Oh, don't go along with him. <laughs> You need to go to the doctor yeah. and get checked out. Yeah. Yeah, listen, Martin. Well, I, we, Drew, don't, I'd love to don't, help. I'm, I've been helping the medical profession. I've I been, know, uh, by giving him money. Don't yeah. don't dance for Martin. He's neurotic. He's on his third AIDS check from uh, a lick, half a lick job, for Christ's sake. <laughs> a lick job. Sure, he's been on the Internet. All, please. A lick job. Okay. Everybody, stop that kind of thinking. Sean? You're yeah. 24? Yep. What's up? Um, my wife uh, has obsessive compulsive disorder, and um, I've kind of learned to deal with that. It's just part of life now. How does it manifest? Um, just certain things she does. The, the TV has to be on a diff- certain channel when it gets turned off at night, or clothes have to be in a certain spot, or purse has to be in a certain spot. Out of curiosity, does she smoke pot? Nope, not at all. I, never. I, so never I've noticed that, there, that people... That and they may already be that way to begin with, but when they smoke pot, it does, many times gets a lot worse. It gets worse well, they they get uh, festivious or something it's when they get they like to move stuff around and yeah. position the salt yeah. shaker so they're facing right. the right way. But it doesn't seem to take over their life. It's just they get stoned and they fiddle. Yeah, could be. You, you know what I mean? I but it, it doesn't it doesn't become like what the normal uh, OCD people have or whatever oh, yeah. whatever we're talking about here, uh, which, which is. They do it. They do it twenty four seven. Disruptive, yeah. Yeah. All right. So, Sean, what's the question? Well, um, she also has a lot of anxiety. Sure. And uh, lately, it's been getting like really, really bad. To where she she has phobias of like taking pills, or okay. if she eats something, she's always afraid that she's gonna no. get poisoned from oh, it. Oh, hate those people. Oh my. She has I'm phobias nuts. of driving alone by herself yeah. at night. And she's, stuff gonna, like that. she's gonna screw that kid up in a big way. <laughs> yeah. But uh. The thing is, is you know, I I try to emotionally support her so much, but yeah. after a while, it just gets so frustrating. Cause yeah. It's like, it's well, different. she needs help, but you are just like I was trying to get uh, Drew not to do with Young Martin. I really do believe people want to be told to shut up and get on with it half See, that, the that's time. What, that's what I do sometimes. I, I just I I try to rationalize with her as much as I can. But well, here's what you need to do: you need to help her contain her behaviors. You need to be available, and then you need to take care of yourself. Like you, can't be there, you can't be there 24-7. Well, she's got to get help if she's yeah. going to be this way because yeah. you have to explain to her that uh, this kind of stuff freaks a kid out. Yeah. Okay, well, what's what's the best way? Because I've seen, like, on TV and everything for infomercials for, like, these tapes. That... No, it's medication. No, this you need her, duct tape. You need to duct is... tape her to the uh, lazy she boy and never let her medication. leave. She won't take medication? No, no. She, that's one of her big fears is pills. I mean... For an aspirin, Jesus. she has a headache. I, I have to cut the aspirin in like four pieces. No, that's my point. Away. Don't do it. Well, then get her in a therapist's office and get some talk going. Sean, uh, okay, yeah. here's the deal. Okay. Do, do not aid her in this. She wants, I, I could set cure, limits, I'd cure her limits, in a week. It, and that's what I think she wants. But if I'm living with this broad and she's saying, cut that aspirin to four pieces, I'm like, shut your pie hole and take the aspirin. You drive me nuts. <laughs> You you keep acting like a mad person. You don't get any help. I'll take the kid and I'll leave. Yeah. You drive the kid nuts, and ironically, he's going to turn out like you. Yeah. So get it together. Get it together. That's it. Don't be cutting aspirin. Don't, don't be quartering aspirin for her. Yeah. People respond amazingly well to that, and it's something that has fallen by the wayside as far as society goes. You know what? Though a guy like that, 
may not have the firmness in him. You know, she knows that she can undermine him because she's been doing it and doing it and doing it. It's under his skin. Yeah. And I'm telling you, people, it, it works. My old lady tries to give me a little grief once in a while. Wait till you have kids. Oh. Oh, yeah. They're going to hate me. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Yeah. Sweet justice. Well, you know what chicks do? Kids probably do the same thing. They give you that, uh, you know, I'm like, look, uh, why don't you head down the hill and pick up the uh, Thai food? Oh, why do I have to pick up the Thai food? I uh, why do you never? I always, I don't know, and I always fire right back. Yeah, see the ceiling fan and the, the thing. Do you see that TV over there? Do you see that? How do you think that got there? It's a hundred trips to the Thai food place. Now go get it. Yeah, and but, the, but when, and, when there's a kid involved, then it's like, hey, I'm gonna have my soul sucked out of here by your genetic material. Now you go get the Thai food. Well, I'll tell and you. And then you're gonna go out and get the Thai food. Maybe. Yeah. I'm not going. I'll tell you one thing. I will not have a pussy for a kid. <laughs> I get the one of these kids. I don't like peas. I only oh, eat melted cheese. I don't justice. like regular God, cheese. I cannot wait until this moment arrives. Now, when this man has I children. will refuse. I, I work with a hand because I because I work with writers and they're half of them are Jewish and all of them are neurotic. And I I, I see these guys and they're they won't drive they, they cars. They can take their sandwich and open them up and <laughs> scrape stuff off it and stuff every day. And I'm I, and I'm looking at these guys. They're thirty years old, you know, and they're pulling the lettuce off of <laughs> off of the turkey sandwich. And I think, oh, if I gave if if you were my kid, I swear to Christ, I would just I'd put a bullet in your head while you're asleep. I'd make you change your name and get a, like a nose job, <laughs> so no one knew who you were. And I can't stand those little fussy. My kid is luck. We'll yeah. the, I've, I, I decided this food is good. Here it is. Uh, you don't want to eat it? Don't uh, eat it. We'll see. Good time. Drew, why can't you do that to a fussy eating kid? Don't the, eat it if you don't want to eat yeah, it. Yeah, you can. You can. Oh, my God. Is that? Oh. But it's work because they don't stop there. They keep coming. They keep coming. They keep coming. And they find ways to get under your skin. And my kid's going to be scared of me, though. And that's the way I like it. That'll be fine. Ben? Hey, what's going on? We have, we have no You're women. Twenty-two. On the no women. Guys. Yeah, this is Ben. Twenty-two. What's happening, Ben? Not much. I am. Um, I'm considered an asshole here at Kansas State. Mm-hmm. And I finally like. I st- I'm starting to like a girl, and I just want to know how to get rid of that image. Everybody at uh, Kansas State knows you're an a-hole. Oh, you are an asshole. The, the girls that asshole. I associate with. Yeah. Know me as an asshole. I just don't know. What does that mean? Well, just like I guess in the past, I've kind of. Not treated the women that. Yeah, not but now well. you've turned over a new leaf. Now you're going to be yeah, different. Yeah, and it's like, well, this is the first girl that I've known, really known, that I've really liked. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how to get rid of that image. All right, here's how you get rid of all images. How do you get rid of Drew? I'll ask you a hypothetical. Yeah. How do you get rid of the image of being a crazy person? Shut up. Right. How do you get rid of the image of the guy who's constantly late? Be on time. That's right. Yeah, takes a little while. That's right. Not not forever. Can't do it just on a Monday yeah. and expect everything to be cured. Yeah. But if you're the guy who's always late and all of a sudden you're early for a month, I don't ever be late. That's you, it. You don't get the you won't be the late guy. That's right. And if you're if you're gonna tell me that you've never been late for the last six months and people still call you the late guy, I ain't gonna believe it. Yeah. People forget about stuff like that. Immediately. Yeah. That's the good news. Yeah. People are sort of uh, pliable that way. Yeah, forgive me. You're, you're known as the a hole guy. All you got to be is known as the nice guy for about 10 minutes, yeah. and you'll be fine. So, you want to know how to undo it? And by the way, everybody's earned their reputation. You don't deserve to have it undone in a weekend. You, want, you can just be an a hole for two years, and now you get to be the nice guy? No. That's not fair to the people who are actually nice. That's right. And. It's not fair for the late guy to be the on-time guy for the people who've been on time. That's right. If he can do it in two days. That's right. Thank you, Drew. I have a strong sense of justice, as you well know. And you need to pee, right? I got number two, actually. Oh. <laughs> no, no, I'm going to whiz. I just had a little, I had a little, little gas waiting. I will take a break. <laughs> not Stan Gas. He outrageous. loves hockey, but he, he loves punk rock hockey, but he hates How gas. Can, what, there's like a neuron not firing properly in his head. Well, I think that's something we've known about for a while. Oh, my God, I get out of here. This All is right, thanks. We'll be back. Hey, it's 
the love line. I'm Adam. That's Doc Drew over there. Yeah. 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 No. Cannot <laughs> have. <laughs> I was uh, standing around my den last night for some reason thinking about no cannot have. <laughs> ah. All righty. Somebody called one to talk about uh, The Family Guy, which is one of my favorite shows, uh. and uh, then he fell off the line. But I want to uh, say this, that uh, Seth MacFarlane, who's uh, been on this show, who's the uh, creator of The Family Guy, and does uh, quite a few voices on The Family Guy, uh, came out with us to do some... Uh, Crank Anchors? Crank Anchors uh, last weekend yeah. and uh, was phenomenal. Really? I phenomenal, bet. the I voices bet. this guy does. I'm, uh, I'm rarely envious of uh, other people's talent, wow. but I sat there. Green green is uh, a Kentucky pasture. Did he do, <laughs> did he do uh, Family Guy voices? Or were they and I think to myself, my God, wouldn't it be marvelous if I turned out to be a homosexual? Was it like that, or was it? Uh, he he did uh, he did like the uh, versions of that. He did the Rhode Island guy, but he did like this uh, fifty salesman guy, and he he did a whole bunch of different uh, voices, and he's just uh, so fun, just spectacular. Yeah. yeah. Then Andy Dick came over and uh, to do voices, and he was loaded. No, I think so. Yeah. Uh oh, with, with alcohol or no, I don't know. I don't know. Because what made you say because he was so frag fragmented, or yeah, yeah. We'll talk off the air, Drew, but uh, uh. there's uh, there's trouble brewing. Uh. Jesus Christ yeah. in heaven! Where has this been? Send me an ounce of this stuff! Yeah, I think he got more than an ounce. He got a kilo or two. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know what's going on with Andy Dick, but I think something's going on with Andy Dick. Was he able to do the show? Uh, not really. Uh-uh. I think there's uh, I think there's some little game on kind of thing going on there. He was sober for a while, right? Quite a while. No relapse is part of the disease. So. Yeah. Now, I don't know for sure. He said he wasn't feeling well. Mm. But I think something's going on. We I should have to get, leave we should at this get, point. We should get him in here and yeah. uh, talk to him. Let's see do. what's up with him. Yeah. Tim? Yes. You're 36? 36. What's up? Uh, well, I'm just trying to put some closure uh, to this uh, girl that's been on my mind for a few years. A few years? So, yeah, for a few years, you could say that. High school. I lived with, I lived with her for five. Let's give you the real short story there. I lived with her for five years. I broke off with her. Why? Uh, just arguing back and forth. Uh-huh. Uh, we lived in a small apartment in New York City. Uh-huh. And we were just constantly arguing. And uh, her, her mother lived in Florida. She's an actress. And uh, I drove her back to Florida. Uh, we still kept some strings attached. So I was going to school in Florida. I left my job here, and I went to Florida for 11 months. Took a leave of absence. And um, Are you I tried trouble to work it out. Already? I, mean, I can't follow this. I was just okay. thinking about Andy Dick, there actually. Was, <laughs> yeah? There was a bunch of information that didn't make sense. He, he left his job but he in New York. To to, he to, went to Florida. But you did it to go to school? Well, to go to school and live with her and try it one more time. Well, wh- who's you're... the actress? She was the actress or the mother was the actress? No, she was the actress. Uh, what right. was she doing down there in Florida? Uh, she's not doing too good. Well, she was. they had a show down there or something? She's a Spanish uh, actress. She's on Spanish soap operas. Sweet. Anyway, are they, are they, do they uh, film in Florida? Or what? Yeah. Yeah, they do? Oh, yeah. They always do uh, it in Florida. What did say? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so uh, I came back here, mm-hmm. and she resumed her life. She moved to L.A. Lady Dick in the hizzy. And um, uh, she moved back to uh, L.A., and I moved back here. And uh, it's been almost four years, and every day I think about her. And uh, we've kept in contact, and she started going out with somebody else, and so did I. Mm-hmm. And then I went to Florida last March, and uh, I tried to get her back because... Uh, I, I just think about her all the time. I mean, I've been out with her. I and and what happened when you tried to get her back? Nothing. She just gave me uh, not a real firm no, which I wish that she would have. Nah, uh, yeah. No is no. Yeah, she's not with you. That's all the no you need to know. I, I wish we could hear the story from her standpoint, what, what actually went down here. I got drunk and drove my El Camino into her living room. Yeah. Uh, but listen, Tim, Tim, listen. 
I know she didn't give you a firm no, and I know you do wish for your own peace of mind that she looked you in the eye and said, Tim, we can never be right. ever again. And you know what? I'll thank you to leave. And but people never do that. They say things like, "No, I still love you. I just don't love you. Love you. Yeah, and, and then I'll you always s- love you. You're you say always yes. The one. You say things like, "Well, do you ever think there's a situation or scenario where you could see us getting back together?" And they go, "Well, I don't know what the future. I, you know, I yeah. don't have a crystal ball, but I can tell you that right now it's no. a bad time." Yeah. And that then then the guy walks away with, well, she said down she said she loved me, yeah. and she said down the road, yeah. she could see us getting back together. Right? No, that not look down the road doesn't mean s for anybody. If anybody wants you, they want you now, yeah. just like you would want her now, right. or you do want her now. Right. And imagine- think about what your mindset would be if you look someone in the eye who was pouring their heart out to you and you said, maybe down the road. No, yeah. that you're being nice. Yeah. yeah, Tim, she did tell you. She told you by the fact that you went all the way to Florida to get her back and uh, came home with a handful of, of your own dork. <laughs> That's right. That's right. A cheek full of tears and a handful of dork. You know what I'm saying? Such poetry. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. This should be on a Hallmark card. Really? Really? Thank you. Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> sorry, Tim. Stop thinking about her yeah. and move on. I, I wish I wish we could get more into what really went on with that relationship. I'm sure it was very chaotic. Oh, well, yeah. You, you know she's got some... some she's stuff. not a Mexican soap, so she's got to be... First, it's going to be this very is like, dramatic. This is like stalking... Wear tons of mascara. This is sort of stalking light. You know what I mean? It's kind of quasi-stalking quality. It's yeah. obsessed all the time about her. Needs to stop. Not, Mexican not stops? good. No, I don't see. Mexican chicks wear enough eye eyeliner already. <laughs> now you they're take born the, with it. They're, <laughs> they're born with a uh, propensity toward toward uh, heavy eyeliner mm-hmm. use, and uh, then you take one, you put her on a soap, and uh, all of a sudden uh, you got uh, you got uh, you got Madam from uh, Wailing. Uh, what was that? What was that guy? What was that gay? What was that gay ventriloquist? Waylon and Madam. Oh, my God. Remember that? No. You don't remember that? I mean, vaguely, yes, vaguely. You do. I mean, you got crazy novelty uh, Cruella de Vil type yeah. Uh, yeah. eyeliner going. Yeah, it's crazy. Crazy hair. <laughs> crazy outfits. Jackie? Hi. You're 19? Yeah. Yeah. How are you guys? I love you guys. We're great. Good. Um, yeah, my question. Yeah. Okay, like, um, after, like, having sex with my boyfriend, like, after I peek her, like, orgasm, like, I don't know, like, I kind of, I just want to, like, push him away, like, ew, like, like, I just want him to leave, like, exactly that, like, ew. <laughs> you feel weird after you so have it, the orgasm. So it's not like, like... It's almost like something a guy would do, I know, but... But it's not, know. it's not just that sort of it's too intense and you want him off you, it's that, uh, it's that you're disgusted and you want him to leave. Well, not like this. Not like disgusted or intense. It's kind of more just like after I'm done, I'm just hey, hey leave me alone. Like <laughs> I don't yeah. know. I, yeah, not not that, a great sign. <laughs> not a great sign there, Jackie. But all right, you're 19. Is that wrong? No, like, it's not I wrong. Not, I know not... he wants to go like more, and I'm like, okay, well. <laughs> no, it's not wrong, and it, it's kind of a common thing. But it, um, you know. Y- I don't know, 19. You what? Know, it, yeah, because it's not common among my friends, though. So It's not, it's not that common, but, but it you, does happen. you in love with this guy? No. What? No, she can't do that. Not in love. Why not? Why can't I be? Well, just because you're not. Yeah, I'm not sure you're ready for that yet, right? Oh. Okay. Am, am I right? Um, I, maybe not in love, but like right, right. at I, love. <laughs> no, you're trying, but you're not there. And uh, re- really, it, this kind of thing, when I've seen it in the past, people have some intimacy stuff, some problems with intimacy, and sex just becomes it becomes a, a drug. It becomes something that they're, they're kind of an acting out rather than, than part of a relationship. Yeah. Let's uh, take care of Lee's been a hold for a right. long time. Lee? Yeah? Lee, you're 14? Yeah. Drew is always right about the people who's been on hold for a long time. <laughs> I don't know how Drew knows this by reading the call what the person's temperament is. But anyway, Lee, your question is, you got a 17-year-old ex-girlfriend. Yeah. Threatening to beat up your new girlfriend? Yeah. Why? 
I guess she just doesn't like her or something. Drew, you're always right about that. Yeah. Hold on a second. Trust me, huh? Well, I, I say to Drew, I'll say to Drew, like, uh, some guy's been on hold for 98 minutes, and I'll go, Drew, why haven't you taken this poor soul's call? And they go, like, he's a bad call. <laughs> and I'll go, but why? How do you know? I'm looking at boyfriend, girlfriend, itchy, lesions. <laughs> it's the same crap we always get. And he's like, nah, this one will be bad. And then you punch the person up, and it's that 14-year-old dude who's like, yeah. yeah. And you go, how come this or that? And they go, uh, and you go, how long have you? And they go, I don't know. But good times, huh? Yeah, all right. Lee? Yeah. Uh, all right, let's kick it into high gear for a second, make Drew, make Drew wrong for once, all right? All right. All right. So you got the crazy ex. You guys broke up how long ago? Year and a half. Year and a half. 17, he's 14. It's already kind of weird. Look. And you guys are all going to the same high school? No. Uh, we met through a... Uh, we were, were like hanging out at this one. Yeah, but why? Place. Why does why does your ex girlfriend have access to right. your new girlfriend? Right. Why is she around you? Why is she around? She like lives in the same neighborhood. All right. So. Well, she's not to be around anymore. You stay away from her. If she comes around, just tell her. You know, you, you're gonna have to c bring some authority to bear. That's all. Yeah. He's just yeah. bragging about chicks fighting over yeah. him. Really. All, all right. right. We'll be back. Well, there's the show, Drew. No. Yeah. Can't be. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. We got some talking to do now. <laughs> yes, we do. Call me on my cell phone. I will. We got to finish up. Okay. Got interrupted by the show many times tonight. That's been tough. All right. We'll take a little extendo break. And until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. Uh, no is no. Yeah. She's not with you. That's all the no you need to know. This has been Love Line. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins-Ingle. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.